We have a quick fire question segment. And I feel a lot of a lot of your like the audience would love to hear some of your answers. So. Okay. We're all set for this. Okay. So first one. We all know that you claim that you know you're not a European football, like you don't have a team. You people should let me. You know you don't have a I team. I don't have a team. And I I still don't hundred percent believe it, but you know what? Everybody I'll, disbelieves that. I'll let you I'll let that go. But Please. my question is. Are there any teams or is there any team in any era that maybe you have a soft spot for? Club or national no, team? club. 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 European. European. No, I, so so here's, here's how it works for me. Okay. I, I consider myself a football purist. Okay. In other words, when I'm watching a game, if I'm enjoying one side, mm -hmm. their football, I'm with them. Mm. I'm supporting mm. them. If they start messing up and the other side picks up, I'm moving. I'm supporting you guys. You get that. So I just want to enjoy the game, the game. Get all the juice out of it. You know, that could be with a player I really enjoyed watching and all that stuff. Or I prefer this. Or I kind of like the tactics here or stuff here. So, so as such, I just feel if I'm a fan of one club, even if the club is messing up, you're like, oh, it's okay. Yeah. It's limiting. You know, yeah. it kind of ties it out. So, no, I don't want that. I want the freedom <laughs> okay. to enjoy football. Okay. So, another one, I think people would like to know, does Moses Price like uh, a night in or a night out? So, a night out could be not even necessarily like clubbing or anything, just like dinner with the family or mm. cinema or we'd rather have like a Netflix at home and chill kind of thing. I'm a homely person, oh, yeah. man. <laughs> I'm a full homely person. Yeah. Um, even a night out would be movies and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, all of that. But I, I think I'm a homely person. Okay. Another one. I think you laugh at this one. Mm. Would you rather lose your height or your hair? Because I know, again, as the gray boss, <laughs> we, know, we know the song. So would you rather lose your height or your hair? Okay. I'm bad. Well, uh, dude, I can grow them back. <laughs> I, no, I, I mean, I mean permanently, permanently. But, but here's the thing. I will still rock the gray boss. Yeah. You understand? I mean, yeah, the gray hair and all of that plays you know, a, a big role in this. But as a gray boss, that still stands firmly. So I'm keeping the height, man. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, movies or TV shows? Movies. Really? Yeah. I, so I get... Come on, man. I don't want nobody stringing me along. So just yeah. let me say the whole thing, end it. And, you know and if you say, okay, there's there's like a part two, fine, I get that. But you know, you're watching the whole thing and then you get all tied up. Let me tell you how bad it was. It was prison break. Then, you know, and I, it's a classic right now, right? And I was watching this stuff in my house as a single person. I'm the only person at home. I'm watching this stuff. I need to pee. I can't it move. Can't get off. Because I'm like, no, man, if I move, I'm going to... I could pause this bloody thing. You understand? So it's not like I'm, I had the whole series. I could pause it, go pee, come back, unpause, and enjoy. That was how bad it, it was. You know. I could not leave it. Prison Break was... Until my bladder was like, you would die. You <laughs> Prison but Break was one that I think you get it, that. it gripped. Yeah. So I don't want nothing stringing me along, man. Just, just watch yeah. a feature movie, get it over and done with. Okay. So far, what would you say has been your favorite holiday destination? Oh, favorite, favorite, Zanzibar. Zanzibar. Yeah. Okay. And it was, it was very accidental, you know, because I was, I went to Tanzania, we did some stuff and I said, oh, you know, well, let's just head to Zanzibar. It's a, it's a very short flight and all that stuff. So when it's a short flight, I'm thinking of oh, 30 minutes flight. Dude, it's a 10 minute flight. Literally, you go up and you come down, okay. you know, and First and foremost, you know, it felt like I was in a village. And then by the time we got into the resort, my word, it's a beautiful, beautiful place. Love it. So on camera, you're very calm, you're very composed, you know, how you carry yourself. So I think we would like to know, when was the last time was his praise lost his temper or had to really shout? Um, that would be our hope. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, the only people who can trigger you are people in your right, house. Love, you understand? Yeah. Uh, that would be our home. Um, even at work, I, so here's the thing I've learned. And I think that comes with experience of doing this over 25 years and, and more. Um, no matter how crazy, I'll tell, I'll give you an example. 1999, we hosted the under 17 World Cup and, um, no, 2009. Okay. We hosted the under 17 World Cup. I think 1999 was tw uh, tw under 20. Um, I was going to be on air. I think it was literally my first time doing a live production in studio. And 
no, no, it wasn't the first time in the studio. But my producer, I think there was an error somewhere because, you know, we had gone on a break and stuff. No, not on a Oh, yeah, there was a break. Yeah. And it threw me on air. Just it like just, that. Yes, sir. No preparation, nothing. You know, it's a good thing you're not scratching your nose there and all that, you know, whatever yeah. nonsense we do when you're not doing stuff. And I'm looking, I realize, wait a minute, I'm on air. Then I stayed calm, made sure not to say, am I on air? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> you know, so Easy I just, mistake to make. Yes, I kind of covered up and, and the director was like, oh, you're on air, you're live, you're live, you're live. I'm like, oh, you know, the beauty of technology, can it kind of just makes you feel, yeah, you know, and I just, I, winged, so I winged it and just got it going. That's so Spontaneity you. has always been my strength that's anyway. So you. That's so you. So by the time, you know, when I went on a break, the uh, producer now comes in and says, you know, you guys need to be careful and all that. And I went off on him because mm. I'm like, dude, I didn't throw myself at air. Somebody's not doing the job somewhere, you know, and we went back and forth on it. And they said, the actor was now saying, okay, we're coming back on you in five. You come back and all that. Professional. smart. Keep it there. You understand course, that? Of course. So it's always, I, you, you have to, I, I've often said, and maybe mine comes with a bit of a, a with growing older. You must understand the level of your rage. You get that. For instance, there is rage for my children. <laughs> There's rage for my wife because you're going to have that. There's rage for colleagues. You get when they misbehave. You must temper everything and say, okay, you can't go beyond this. So the things you you need you 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 will need to say the things you cannot say. Yeah. You know, so just manage yourself ultimately. Love it. Okay, what would you say is your most controversial football opinion? So maybe certain players overrated. Maybe something about the super egos. Something that you think that people look at you a bit crazy. So in other words, you're asking me what what unpopular opinion yes. do I have? Yes. Are you ready for this? I'm very ready. Erlen Haaland is overrated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this is going to go viral. Yeah. I'm why, sorry. Is it, uh, explain why do you think so. <sighs> so as a purist, I, I think I know where you're yeah. going. So I'm a fan. I, I'm actually a fan of Erlen Haaland because of the numbers, you know. I had never really sat before. I'm, I'm talking about on, on before I came to the opinion that he's overrated. I'd really never seen his game, per se. So I've seen tidbits here and there, you know, but all you hear are the numbers. And those numbers are scary. Like, it makes no sense. Yeah. But the truth is, if you have someone, for instance, I think Alin Haaland is a good fit. It's, it's, he's a decent finisher, yeah. but not a great striker. Okay. You understand? Okay. He's not a great striker. Okay. When you're talking strikers, you're talking like, and you know, Messi is not even a striker yeah. per se. Ronaldo, you understand? Uh, Ibrahimovic, those are strikers. Okay. And I'm saying guys who could literally take the game by the scruff of the neck, make something happen. Like on their, so like be the ones not necessarily relying on the not service. Not relying on anybody. They can go Those there do and that. make it happen. You understand? Not Erlin Haaland. I'm sorry. Okay. If his back is to the goalpost, he's done. You get that? Yeah, yeah. The whole idea is, and if if you he, so he's got a lot of you know pace and power, power. but no precision. I'm sorry, he has none so of that. So more. I watched his. I'm like, you know what? I want to see this guy play. And I'm like, I'm sorry, this guy is not a good player. I'm sorry, <laughs> he's not great. <laughs> okay, okay. Get, his numbers, no doubt, will speak for him any day, any time. But and that's because your eye test. he is in the right unit. Yes, yes, yes. You get that. Yeah. And you can't go wrong when you're in the right unit. Okay. You put 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 Haaland in the Man U team. Ah, sorry, Man U fans. I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry. But uh, hey, you know, take you, your apology. You know how apology. you know how shitty you guys have been. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so who is your favorite super ego of all time? All time. Hard to say because I've had the privilege of being with a few of the Super Eagles who won the 1980 mm. AFCON. Um, because for me, it's not just what they did on the pitch, it's also who they are as a human being. And maybe because I've watched him play, I have been around him. I have he's coming to my hotel room, we've we've eaten together, and I can categorically say he's a Good human being. human being. Someone I absolutely, absolutely appreciate. And it's got to be JJ or Coach. JJ. JJ. It's got to be JJ. Yeah, I think, I think a lot of people resonate with that. Mm. So the last one, what's something you enjoy doing that probably the, the audience will not know that Moses Praise enjoys doing? Watching movies. Watching movies. I, I do. I, I really do enjoy it. It's one of the ways movies. I relax. I watch movies and stuff. And here's the funny part. I could be watching a movie. And I go sleep. 
I enjoy yeah. sleeping yeah. also. <laughs> that's that's what I say. I, so my wife wakes me up and says, Oh, you know, food, you know, come eat. I'm like, No, I'd rather sleep that's than eat. Like, that's how bad it is. So, yeah, movies, sleeping. Uh, some amazing answers. Yeah, so thanks a lot for that. A pleasure. <laughs>